Greetings, this is Dr. Karthik Natarajan. I am talking to you from the Synapse Pain and Spine Clinic in Besanagar, Chennai. I am an interventional spine and pain physician. Today, we are going to talk to you about what is an epidural injection. Now, epidural injection have been used for patients with back pain. So, a common condition which can cause back pain is a condition called disc herniation. The other names for disc herniation include disc herniation, disc prolapse, slip disc, herniated nucleus pulposus. Now in patients with slip disc or disc herniation, the cushion which is the intervertebral disc between the two bones which are there in the lower back of the human spine get squeezed out. So, if this disc gets squeezed out, behind this disc and bone, you have the spinal cord and from the spinal cord, you have nerves that go on either side of the body. So, you have bone, the nerves that start in the lower back. So, patients with disc herniation may have lower back pain radiating to the leg. So, this is called sciatica. So, when back pain radiates to either side, right side or left side or both sides. This is called sciatica. So typically in disc herniation, patients may have back pain. This pain may radiate to the lower back, gluteal region, back of the thigh, back of the knee, calf muscles, all the way up to the toes. So in, if the nerve is pinched in the back, this pain may radiate down the leg. Some patients along with pain may also have what we call as tingling. So there may be some nerve pulling sensations, electric shock like sensations, pinprick sensations. So this may be felt in the back of the thigh or side of the thigh or in the calf muscles. In severe disc herniations, there may be numbness in the foot or in the leg. So this is disc herniation. So, the conservative treatment for disc herniation includes some lifestyle changes which is avoiding bending forward and lifting anything heavy, avoiding jerky travel. So generally patients with disc herniation, we encourage them to not use very jerky travel like two wheelers, autos and share autos. We encourage patients to walk or use car, bus or train. Third lifestyle changes, whenever you are sitting in the office or on the sofa, to sit back. So the lower back is touching the back support and your spine is straight. And fourth is the type of mattress that you use at home. We want you to use a reasonably firm bed mattress in which you're not sinking into. So these lifestyle changes are encouraged in patients with disc herniation. Along with this, we may give some medication, which includes nerve medication and some back strengthening exercises. So for the conservative treatment for disc herniation is some lifestyle changes, basic medicine and back exercises. The patients who, are, who don't get relieved with conservative treatment, sometimes we consider injections in the back which are called epidural injections. Now broadly, there are three types of epidural injections, right? So, Always, we confirm the diagnosis of disc herniation by doing an MRI. The MRI may confirm L4, L5 or L5, S1 disc herniation, which is a fairly common level of disc herniation. This group of patients may have pain radiating to the leg. So, if conservative treatment is not working, then only we think about injections. Now, in injections, there are three types of injections. One is a basic epidural injection which we call as an interlaminar injection. Now the interlaminar injection is a very basic procedure which may be done in an operating room or a procedure room where the anesthesiologist may ask you to lie down in your side. They will ask your knees to be bent and then they will do an injection in the middle of the lower back. This is a very basic injection. The next two injections that I'm gonna talk about or more advanced injections. So the second one is called a caudal epidural injection. Now the caudal epidural injection is a better technique than the interlaminar injection. So the caudal injection 
cannot be done blind so your doctor may take you to a procedure room or an operating theater he will use an x-ray machine to make sure the procedure is done accurately and safely usually we put good local anesthesia and then do the caudal injection so the caudal injection is superior in safety and efficacy to the basic interlaminar epidural injection the third injection that i'm going to talk about is called a selective nerve root injection or a transforaminal epidural injection so the selective nerve root injection is a even better technique than caudal or interlaminar injection so the selective nerve root injection what we do is we identify which nerve root on which side is specifically affected the doctor or the pain physician will be able to make out which nerve is involved by looking at the clinical symptoms and confirming it with the lumbar spine mri once we confirm this we do this procedure which is called selective nerve root injection which is a more accurate more effective and more safer epidural technique so what we do is we call this patients to the procedure room or operating room one day we put an iv line for safety during this procedure the patient is fully monitored with uh, blood pressure pulse oximeter and ecg an iv line is there for safety there may be a bit of sedation and the place where we are going to do the injection we give good local anesthesia so the patient is absolutely comfortable so there is a normal table the patient lies down face down the area of injection is in the lower back if it is both sides it's both sides if it is predominantly one side we do only on the affected side after local anesthesia we see the place where the nerve is pinched under the fluoroscope or the x-ray under local anesthesia we do an injection from outside so the selective nerve root injection is not a surgery there is no cutting involved it is an injection just like getting an injection in the hand or in the buttock muscle once we do the injection the patient is kept in the hospital for observation for safety purposes for a duration of 1 or 2 hours after observing this patient is sent home on the same day so typically the selective nerve root injection is a day cap procedure you will stay in the pain clinic or hospital for a duration of about 3 to 4 hours after that you can go home and take rest that day you can start moving around inside your house from the next day onwards and you can go back to work from day 2 so typically after the nerve root injection the third or fourth day the doctor wants to review you so you review with your pain physician on the third or fourth day after reviewing the patient making sure at least 70 to 80% of the original sciatica pain or the radiating pain is relieved he may suggest you to start back strengthening exercises so the treatment for disc herniation with sciatica pain is some lifestyle changes avoiding bending forward and lifting weight avoiding jerky travel good ergonomics sitting back in the chair using appropriate mattresses and physical activity and walking are encouraged the procedure that i suggested is selective nerve root injection done under x-ray guidance under iv sedation followed by good back strengthening exercises so after reviewing you the doctor will send you to the physiotherapist who will teach you back strengthening exercises which could include exercises like hamstring stretches calf stretches extension exercises core strengthening exercises so these exercises are taught correctly by the physiotherapist the patient has to learn from the physiotherapist and do this regularly at home so we are looking at patients doing these exercises 20 minutes in the morning 20 minutes in the evening for a duration of at least 4 to 6 months at home so you learn it properly from the physiotherapist and do this at home and we found that patients with disc herniation can successfully avoid spine surgery by the steps that i told you so the the purpose of the lifestyle changes are to prevent further injury 
the problem that is there in the disc can be fixed with selective nerve root injection the purpose of the post procedure back strengthening exercises are to strengthen the surrounding muscles around the spine with this you can get safe effective and long term relief of back pain which is radiating down to the leg so this is a very effective procedure and if you follow the instructions correctly this can be a long term solution and you'll be able to avoid spine surgery in majority of patients with disc herniation i hope this was useful thank you very much